Wow, you're hot. Uh, all right. Uh, my name's John Paul. Um, you can call me Professor. Um, and thanks for this, uh, coming to this lecture on uh, intersectionality. Um, I'm going to get on with it and uh, give you um, a little introduction to myself via the metaphor of intersectionality. I think my lights have gone green here. Like, I think I'm allowed to go in your direction, if that's okay. Put my foot down on the throttle and go in the direction I'm heading because I have been waiting for this all day. To be in front of you, giving you my work, which is always directed towards you and with love. And this is the direction I'm facing, but as I'm doing this, I can feel a green light happening here. And hear the word faggot. You have to excuse me one second. I'm just going to deal with this over here. <clears throat> so I'm dealing with faggot over here. Maybe dealing with it. You know, being annoyed, in fact. Just with a lack of imagination. There are so many rich, beautiful words you can call a queer. Faggot it seems a bit poor. Anyway. I'm dealing with queer over here, faggot over here, and I think it's done. Oh, and then I'm back with you. This is where I want to be. This is where I'm directed. And then I hear the word peasant. <laughs> Please just hold on one second. Just to give you some background, my father is uh, from northern Italy, um, from a small village in northern Italy where he worked uh, the land. So, yeah, peasant. <laughs> I'm here working with this over here. I'm not quite sure whether faggot is dead or not yet, whether that's still going to bubble up at some point. But anyway, I think things got, I've got things under control and I'm back to where I want to be. But really, am I back 100%? I've got some stuff going on in the background which is making me not completely present. And I really hope someone else doesn't distract me because maybe you might leave the room. Oh, it's all quiet. That's good. And then I hear the words, nigger lips. Now, this is what they used to call me at school, which, to give it some context, you have to imagine this face much smaller, but the lips the same size. <laughs> so, when I, as I grew up, my head grew, but my lips didn't. So, anyway, nigger lips. This is an example of being at an intersection. In this case, an intersection of insults. Um, and I'll explain more as we go on. Um, this first track is called... Busy day at the intersection. <laughs> I'm going to lay out the same thing in a couple of different ways and see how each one plays out. The same theme, those recurring memes shouting in the echo chamber. But there's a danger here that I might offend, so I'm coming at it from all sides. Queer, race, class, sexuality, maybe this is professional suicide. But I'll be making myself clear and let you decide about this professor's version of intersectionality. So cover your ears, those prone to offence, cause shit, I am a bitch. I don't sit on no fence, I got an itch Them everyday mosquito stings of you don't quite belong Not quite sticks and stones, more like splinters Cold and constant Like a Swedish winter It's about getting down low in the mess and the muck of You know what, I no longer give to flying up So let me bring it My A-game No bullshit and no shame Sisters and brothers I hope you dig it Say that again, straight boy. Peasant. Say that again, rich boy. I'm right here and to my face. Oh, so now you want to do race. Hmm, white boy, please. Are you for real? What do you feel when you say those words, brother? Huh? Is it fear? Or just good old fashioned hate? Well, come then. Give me all of that hate. But get your story straight, I'm from the Cape Townships, my great granddaddy was a slave. So rape and hate are part of my genealogy, so it's Kaffir if you please. Get it right, sort out your epistemology, do your homework brother. Think outside of your philosophically white cult before you deliver an insult that was meant for another. Oh, say it again, remind me how much you fear. Call me queer one more time brother. Say it, white boy, I dare you. Say it again, 
until you learn that it's making you weak and it's just making me stronger because it ain't your turn to speak not any longer so different identities but none cause for fragility but plenty of affect provoked when you are consistently described as a defect shame rage fear anxiety on the intersection of woke the bypass of sex and class the crossroads of race and gender where my academic ass meets his face so he can kiss it and this is the lecture from Professor Bender. And what happens when all the lights go green and all battles must be fought at the same time? When you are tired of fighting sexism on the floor while racism flashes up on your screen, homophobic brothers are ganging up on you and right-wing homos are banging on your door? Are you tired of not bringing all of you to the party? When you have to leave one of you at home just so as not to make someone feel uncomfortable? Well, bring it to the party, bring it all to the party And it will be a party or it will not be at all Sisters and brothers, turn all the lights green And let yourselves be seen With your soul and your spirit, your gut and loin, brain and grind Let your chakras speak and endorse and sing While histories spin and puke and revolution ovulates and Struggle with ejaculates, conception of the everyday divine The goddess of rhythm and the gods of rhyme The music of the cells, the molecular dance of Past, coming present, vibrational chant in your huge speculations. May you speak your futures and in your fictions. May the past be your tutor. May you be present in your predictions. Sisters and brothers, this is the Mixed Race Mixtape. Here's a story, and it's called um, A Professor Walks Into a Bar. <laughs> so I've just uh, come from the recording studio, and I've been finishing off my track called White Boy Bubblegum. Um, and uh, I'm at a bar, and I'm writing some notes. I'm thinking to myself, um, this poetry gig is cool, man. I like this poetry gig. But is it a career, being a poet? Um, Anyway, so I'm writing down, thinking about my queerness and my careerness and all that kind of stuff. And there's three guys sitting opposite me, and they, they're, they're in, intently interested in all this. Pardon me. And uh, guy number one says, Oi, mate, mate, I'm sorry to disturb you. You look really concentrated. What are you writing there in your little notebook? I was like, oh, well, uh, I'm a professor. I have a PhD. But now I'm uh, writing poetry, and I'm just thinking about the next step in my queer, career. So, and he says to me, ah, oh, queers. Fucking hate queers. <laughs> I turn to guy number two, I say, hello mate, what's your deal? Well, you got a PhD, I've got an MA. How lovely for you. What's your MA in? Being a cunt. Oh, it's better than being a dick. Yeah, being a cunt to women. Uh-huh. I turn to the third guy, a brown fellow. I say, what's your deal, my man? And he, went, he says, um, well, I'm the black one, innit? <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, guy number one says, oh, go on, read us one of your poems, mate. Read us one of your poems. I'm like, mm -hmm. my black brother says, uh, well, you hate queers, you're a cunt to women. I think that's probably all your material, mate. I went, thank you, you've read me well, good. Oh, go on, go on, just get up, all right, all right. And I look him in the eye, and I say, white boy, your booty, it's so bouncy like a trampoline. <laughs> Gonna go old school, slap on some Vaseline. <laughs> Papi gonna tattoo with his woody, one night I love you's in your white boy pussy. Get tabooed and breeded with this mixed blood seed. Me be voodoo tree in your tummy. <laughs> hung with strange fruit. Me be history's juice on your tongue. Say it's yummy sweating there in your birthday suit. Cause now that you're naked, you can't fake it. There's no escaping Voodoo daddy got all the loot now. Cause you stole all my gold. 
and all of my riches. And now you just be one of my straight white man boy bitches, white boy. <laughs> oh, is that the time? <laughs> I have a train to catch. Bye, fellas. Nice meeting you. And I get out of there really, really quickly. Um, but what I said to myself on my way to the fictitious train was, uh, John Paul, always have a poem in your pocket. So this next one um, was the first poem I wrote in this album, White Boy Bubblegum. And it starts uh, a little bit around my experience of being the only chocolate chip in a bowl of vanilla ice cream at school. Um, and uh, feeling envious of their lovely golden hair. Uh, the fact that they look like all the superheroes that we see. They look like the marble statues of the gods. They look like goddamn white Jesus. Um, yeah, so um, it's a little bit based around that. Here we go. Uh, white boy bubblegum. Wished I was thicker skinned, thinner lipped. Milk daddy sipped from mummy's coffee cup Out I pop mongrel, mixed breed pup This was a race I was never gonna win Attached to only half my face A single shot in a sea of milk Espresso frizz mid straight vanilla silk You said there was no place for me In your privilege, your pure line heritage Coffee coloured stain on your pretty pink territory Smothered all my pain Cause this place stinks of history Fighting to blend in against them slights you keep sending But now that I'm older my shades are getting bolder Stronger than the sun while you glow in the dark I'm gonna shine, I'm gonna spark You will reflect my light, respect this curve My world And watch these colours unfurl I like my boys with nearly smooth gold Godzilla when I make my move I chew them up like bubblegum Pet them in fresh off the stock Pop, pop, pop them till they just can't walk And if I can't be like you white boy bubblegum I'm gonna pop, pop, pop you till all your flavor's gone Make you feel just right even though you know it's wrong Chew you up, spit you out till next boy come along Because you made me this butch, you made me this bitch Wanna be like you white boy but now I don't wanna switch I'm having too much fun with that pretty pink bum Gonna colonize, terrorize till all them racist lies That you've been fed about my brothers get fucked at all your head Got all my sisters in the cars when I throw you on the bed Hell yeah they sing, you make his whole sting White boy bubblegum, you be my bling To work, white boy, bottom bubble gum. I'm gonna be coming on strong like Sodom and Gomorrah. Gonna pop your white boy blossom bum all night long until tomorrow. Then I leave you stranded with my dark mark on your branded, inked on your pale pink skin. Heterohoma carnivora, that's who the fuck you invited in. Suck it up and let my mixed fresh it sink on in. Oh, white boy, booty so bouncy like a trampoline. Gonna go old school, stop out some Vaseline. Puppy gonna tattoo with this woody one night i love you's in your white boy pussy get to food and breed it with this mixed blood seed maybe voodoo tree in your tummy hung with strange fruit maybe history's juice on your tongue say it's yummy sweating there in your birthday suit and now that you make it then you cut and fake it in the whiskey being voodoo daddy got all the loot now because you stole all my gold and all of my riches now you just be one of my straight white man boy bitches white boy All the white boys clapping that song. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Why so shameless? Why so shameless? Why so nasty? Why so aggressive? I have a theory. 
I have a theory about fierceness, in fact. Fierce girl, fierce. Ah. I have a a theory. (laughs) So um, we had an intersection of uh, class, race, gender, sexuality, many other things, age, ableness. Um, And each one of those might come with a very specific emotion. One's idea of uh, race might evoke rage. Gender might evoke anxiety. Class might evoke dignity or disdain, et cetera, et cetera. When someone uh, is is throwing that insult um, towards uh, sexuality, it's going to a very, very specific place. It's aimed at the place from which you love and desire. So shame is most often associated as a symptom of that kind of oppression. And one symptom of shame is shamelessness. Going to one side, I want you to imagine a closet in the corner of the room. It's dark, it's airless, there's no one to talk to except a few coats. Um, And that is where young gay people put the part of themselves that loves. And whenever someone opens the closet to get a coat or some shoes, they have to scurry into the corner so as not to be discovered, which means uh, that it's both incredibly lonely, but also you're in a constant state of adrenaline. So no wonder when that young woman or young man decides to come out of the closet, actually, I, I will speak for men, I won't speak for women, when that young man comes out of the closet, he might well come out like this. Wow, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, here. Look at me, look at me. Um, sorry, that was a bit extra. Um, so uh, I wrote, oh, uh, before I do the next one, I need to quote uh, one of my most treasured epistemological philosophers, RuPaul. Um, and I just want to, I, I want to quote from, uh, I think it's volume six of his 12-part uh, volume on postmodern ethics called Drag Race. Um, every man has an inner sissy. And this is not necessarily about uh, sexuality anymore. This is about the ways of performing uh, gender. Anyway, this one is called The Inner Sissy Blues. <laughs> sissy boy. Princess in disguise Playing straight To hide from the hate He's dying inside So wise But wasting away Skin and bone thin from the lies He's been fed That his love Is sin Poor little sissy boy, singing the inner sissy blues. His joys are strange, his affections are afflictions, infectious. Predilections that could be contagious, more dangerous than boys addicted to violence who punch him to silence with, don't be that. Shouldn't be that Straight is right Hate will be the game If you don't give up your fight Oh, sissy boy You've got it wrong No one wants to hear your song Said the teachers And the preachers And the neighbors and the parents, the antidepressants, the dictators, the men's magazines, the friends in the canteen and every classroom, cinema, cloakroom, curricula, the same thing. 
play dead sissy keep it out of sight leave it unsaid choose right leave them blues inside have that smile butch up your gate abdicate your right to have your own say leave those in a sissy blues unsung Then his clothes started saying it, and his room started smelling of it. Bath time, bedtime, toys started yelling it. Claustrophobic, the itch was in his bones, word song on his skin, word stitched and spit like a homophobic sting from the daily news. And that's when the inner sissy blues began. Blues in his lungs, blues, blue hate inked under those tiny little feet that might break from the weight of walking straight down that straight, straight street. His inner sissy blues, unsung. Don't be that, shouldn't be that. Straight is right. Hate will be the game if you don't give up your fight. Oh, sissy boy, you've got it wrong. Play dead, sissy, keep it out of sight. Leave it unsaid, choose right, leave them blues inside. Have that smile, butch up your gate. Abdicate your right to have your own say. Leave those in a sissy blues unsung. So he put his inner sissy in a nine-story tower, far, far away, where no one would feel his power, his brightness, his loco, the gloriously gay grace of his Coco symphonic face, his queer song, the harmonically righteous wrong of what he wanted to say, the cacophony of his black and blue melody. The truth that there were no prince coming along, no heir to some white crown to mince up the long blonde hair that were not his to let down. Just an afro growing out and flowing round till it filled the room with frizz. Choking in the boom of his mixed race microphone, his smoking gay fro with no space to grow until the strength of his curl broke the walls of that world and the extent of his feelings smote the ceiling and that ceiling came crashing down on his head in a shower of dead straight rich white names and nouns and he knew that his gay fro was his unseen crown. He looked up into the sky and he sang free brown crown of curls smile as big as the world in a sissy be free to be seen You were queen, so rain, free, brown, crown of curls, smile as big as the world. Thank you. There's been a lot of words tonight, and I know that English is not everyone's first language. 
So uh, this next one, I'm going to flash up some lovely visuals. Let you drift off into that. You don't have to listen to my words if you don't want to. Permission given. Don't worry, I'm used to it. I'm a teacher. <laughs> However, if you really want to impress me, you cannot listen to my words and do this. <laughs> You'll get extra points for that. Uh, this next one is called um, the, pa the Pass. Um, and occasionally uh, I can pass a straight. Yeah, I can. What's that look for? Occasionally I can pass for white ish. If I maybe straighten my hair. Um, uh, I learned at school how to pass for being upper class by polishing my accent. Uh, and spending a lot of time in, with those dead white philosophers in the library, um, classing up my, um, my act. The best impersonation I've done so far, though, is of being a man. I've been at that for quite a long time, and uh, I'm doing all right, actually. Um, it's quite a good performance. Uh, I, and I remember the exact moment at school when I realized that was something that I did have to learn. Uh, how to talk and walk in a specific way, to not get my head kicked in, basically. Um, uh, and what you need to know about this story um, is, yeah, that I went to this very posh uh, school where I was passing as being the same class, um, that uh, my mother is from the Cape Townships, Bontivo, uh, and uh, she uh, raised me in London on Beethoven and Chopin, rather than Marvin Gaye and Bob Marley, which I would have rathered. Um, she, just, she was giving me all the, the best opportunities. She was trying to give me everything that she could not have and everything my father could not have. Um, and then I arrived in, uh, and so obviously, you know, this whole nigger lips and uh, very extreme kind of, well, it wasn't extreme. I mean, I mean, my classmates were very impressed with my A grades because, you know, Zaccarini, because clearly your brain is smaller. Um, etc. Um, so um, I was kind of used to that. So when I arrived in Sweden um, about seven years ago, um, I suddenly realized that there was a, such a thing called whiteness. It's like, and it was a kind of a surprise to me. Um, uh, which is nice because we don't have a problem with race in Sweden. So that, you know, <laughs> so I hear. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Feel free to um, just drift off and watch the visuals or listen to what I'm going to say. It's, okay, this one is called The Pass. Press play. Did I fool him with my beautiful vocabulary? Did I pass? with my cut glass accent, my mask of class, all that time spent playing with those dead men in his library, hell-bent on slaying his one percent ass. Me, trouble agent, double bender, mulat professor, main contender in this combat that he called a race, where I surpass expectation. I'm just faking, I'm just making it up. I'm just passing all his dead white man examinations because I'm playing both sides. My butt is split by the fence. I'm testing two places at the same time and that is hard, but it's the best offense. So I play the diversity card, the only one in my deck, a real diversion tactic to get me in deep up to my neck, stay elastic, stretch thin between day and night, black and white, keep the rich man tight and make him pay. Because my mother, how much did it cost her to put me, the imposter, through that top class schooling that saw me coming in last? Who were we fooling with my triple A grades? My future was already made. It's not surprising that it looked like I was rising when I was always sinking. What was she thinking? 
Was I her sleeper cell? Her brown boy Nikita? Was she training a critiquer that she weren't ever allowed to be? Who'd wake his fire someday and make the equation that desire is insolvable? A mission impossible. A viral queer boy flower to infiltrate the powers of denial. The slave built cathedral spirals of the righteous minds and deviate the ideology of discriminate through biology. My friends, are we ever going to leave? this colony. Was this the pass she slaved to give me? To play a game that was rigged? That fighting chance, a dream well past its sell-by date? I was designed to be his butler. Do him a soft shoe dance. I will serve him a cold plate of gender trouble. Rewind. My mother played me Beethoven when I would have chosen the blues. Made me sing hymns of the wrong hue when it was the spiritual I wanted to bring. I needed soul, I needed Negro jazz. I got feed a Eurovision pizzazz. But then that Cape Town summer came along in the township with my mother. Leaving her skinny white music behind in cold South London and let me dance to the lush tones and fleshy embrace, largeness of body and soul and African bone, a gliding contiguity of falling autumn skins, getting down low in the funky fluid that finds the lowest place to go. Glutinous hue sticking to each other in the prick of the heat, all the township mothers moving to that mucky, mutinous beat. Fast forward. I'd been wearing ideological shades prescribed by Dr. Everything Will Be Alright against racial brightness. I confess they gave my eyes some relief. Gave me Eurovision. And only moments of truth days were moved haste high did those protective scales fall away so I could see how uniformly brown I was in the light of the day. And it stung my eyes. The part that I was ignoring in the mirror, that rum-colored kid, sleep slipped them back over like color, blind lids. But then I woke, found myself in a Scandinavia of blinding, unspoke, no race. Wash over me, tow me like a tide. My cover blow, no place to hide. My inks splashing all out of the place. I was finally woke to the spectrum of my face. Stop the tape. It's like a visual rape to suddenly see what you try to avoid. Has this been real or has this been celluloid? The film that you've been played from birth. This is the deal, John Paul, you've been played from the first. That film was flawed. Press stop, reverse. Tell your story. Press record.
running straight to hide from the hate. He's dying inside. So wise, but wasting away. Skin and bone thin. From the lies he's been fed that his love be sin. Poor little sissy boy. Singing the inner sissy blows. His joys are strange. His affections are afflictions. Infectious. Predilections that should be contagious. More dangerous than boys addicted to violence who punch him to silence with. Don't live that. Shouldn't be that. Can't be that. Straight is right. Hate will be the game if you don't give up your fight. Sissy boy, you got it wrong. No one wants to hear your song. So the teachers and the preachers, the neighbors, and the parents, antidepressants, the dictators, the men's magazines, the friends in the canteen and every classroom, cinema, cloakroom, curricula. The same thing. Play dead, says you keep it out of sight, leave it unsaid, choose right, keep them blues inside, hide that smile, butch up your gate, abdicate your right to have your own say. Leave them in a sissy blue sun sun. Then his clothes started saying it, and his room started smelling of it. Bar time, bedtime toys started yelling it. Claustrophobic. The itch was in his bones, sewn on his skin, words stitched in spit like a homophobic skinning on the daily news. And that's when the inner sissy blues begun. The blues in his lungs, hate blue inked under his tiny little feet under a tongue that might break from the weight of walking straight down that like straight straight street his inner sissy blues unsung I awoke, felt the white waves of blinding unspoke. No race wash over me and tow me like a tide. No place to hide, cover blown, my ink splashing all out of the place. I was finally woke to the spectrum of my face. It's like a visual rape to suddenly see what you try to avoid. Like, has this been real or has this been celluloid? The film that you've been played from birth. This is the deal. You've been played from the first. That film was flawed. Press reverse. Stop. Start your story. Funny thing is, when I came on, it felt like you were clapping my afro. <laughs> we're heading to, we're heading for, to the last two songs of this evening. Um, last two poems of this evening, and they're, they're twinned. Um, 
The first one is called Sister, <clears throat> and it's a letter to my sisters, um, and I, which in a way says, um, I don't know what you, exactly what you experienced, but I do have an experience of the same prick that you have to deal with occasionally. And I um, wrote it six months before Me Too went viral. It'd been there for 10 years, but when it went viral, <clears throat> uh, and I was about to press publish, I went, mm, not your time. Not your time to go, yeah, me too. Once or twice, someone touched me. As opposed to something systemic and structural. Um, so I don't, have, I don't have any time for, so I don't have any time for men too. What, no, I mean, that, no, okay, no, no, that's a lie. I do have some time for men too. I have as much time for men too as I have for straight pride and uh, All Lives Matter and White History Month. <laughs> Just to put it in context. So the first one is called Sister. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to take care of you, so I'm going to give you a visual again. Um, I talk a lot, so the words will be repeated anyway. And then in this next song, which is uh, "Mister," we know a thing or two about you, Mister. Is song number two, and Mister, as it goes on from Sister, is um, the Mister could be something systemic, something structural, a politician. It could be someone personal. It could be several people in someone's history. Um, my example would be I was. Uh, at the Edinburgh Festival, doing a show, and I was walking down the hill with my stage manager. And I see an old man hobbling up the hill to us. Um, uh, and as he gets closer, I start to recognize his face. And I go, oh, it's, it's him. But a little old cripple of a man now. And I remember him from 20 years ago. And the experience of seeing him again was like having a hand made of ice close slowly and tightly around my heart so that I could not breathe. And my stage manager said, sorry, what did you say? I went, no, I didn't say anything. She went, no, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure you said if I had a fucking gun right now. Just as an example. Anyway. I'm going to start with Sister. I'm going to do a little bit of um, rope stuff. So I'm going to do a little of a rope poem with my sister poem. And I think I'm going to call... I mean, yeah, I, it's called... It's got one of two titles. And maybe after the show you can tell me which one you prefer. It's either Date Rape Rope or Rohypnol Rope. <laughs> what has the better, better ring? You can, you can tell me afterwards. Okay. Sister. You know what it's like. His gaze drift from your eyes and go way down south. And does he hear what you say? Is he capable to hear those wise pearls from your mouth? Or was his head unavailable? Already in the bedroom scene. Girl, you know what that dress means. You soon, on the table, in the kitchen, in the toilet. You like him, girl. You think, don't spoil it. And sister, you know what it's like to kiss with fear. Despite what you want to hold dear, yeah, once was enough for the words. I am stronger than you. To rough your ear and make things crystal clear. Sister, you know what it's like. To have no space. Between him and your skin. 
He can walk right in. No permission. It's his right. It's his place. His identity's mission, walking tall, like he owns it all. History's war around him to remind him of his centrality. But it's you around him that reminds him of his own ephemerality. And sister, I will never speak for you, but I am on your side. You don't know what I've been through either, as a guy who likes guys. And I won't apologize for what I have fantasized, because we share that double bind of what quivers and dangles, what snares and troubles, sends them shivers and spangles through our minds, don't think. I don't know a hole is just a hole and what's on his mind ain't these words but my behind so sad he not in control so burned bad by his desire he can't help it poor poor man just got a touch, just got a pry open the can of that strange soft fruit he think must be like paradise. Oh sister, I know a thing or two about the mister. gaze drift from your eyes and goes ways down south does he hear what you say is he capable to hear those wise pearls from your mouth or was his head unavailable already in the bedroom scene girl you know what that dress means you soon on the table in the toilet in the kitchen you're liking girl don't spoil it sister you know what it's like to kiss with fear despite what you want to hold dear yeah once was enough was the words i'm stronger than you to rough your ear, sister, you know what it's like to have no space between him and your skin. He can walk right in, no permission, it's his right, his place, his identities, mission walking tall like he owns it all. History's war around him to remind him of his centrality, but it's you around him that reminds me of his old ephemerality. Oh, sister, I will never speak for you, but I'm on your side. You don't know what I've been through either as a guy who likes guys. Cause we share that double bind of what quivers and dangles, what snares and troubles, and some shivers and spangles through our minds. Don't think I don't know a hole, it's just a hole. And what's on his mind ain't these words but my behind. So sad he not in control. So burned bad by his desire, oh he can't help it. Poor, poor man. He's just got a touch. He's just got to pry open that can of strange soft fruit think must be like paradise sister I know a thing or two about the mister I was a slinky little thing, almost verging on a girl Not like silky baby skin, smoky soft brown bouncy curls I was fresh to the street, like a virgin breeze I was so damn sweet, I put an ache in his teeth Pretty boy, my lass has teased I put a wobble in your man, man, knees. But mister, 
You've been in before, so I'm so surprised. You sold blind days, crazy, lust hazed. You've been morally compromised, Mr. Oh, Mr. You want me there? Come, 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 bring a big white thumb to this brown, brown sugar, this darkest shade of fair. Oh, you want me there? All yours, dark sugar. On all fours, give me no room to maneuver. You want me to suck you up like I'm a fucking hoover. You want to sink it in my face like a knife in butter. Swallow you down like I ain't got no gag reflex, motherfucker. Gonna snake you down to the bottom of the ladder All I wanted was to be your motherfucking brother Seek the solace of a man who might understand On this point I'm beside my sisters We are hand in hand Motherfucker Mister You said I had a smell, a scent kind of colour to curve this straight king dump bent fantasia you said I had that tint that taste that glint of crazy in my eyes your premature demise is what I am fantasizing about mister let me pop up in a vein drop me some melanin for some soul feeding for a moment we could be the same and you could be my kin but oh no, you got me on all fours Give me no room to maneuver You want to suck you up like I'm a fucking hoover You want to sink it in my face like a knife in But I swallow you down like I ain't got no gag reflex Motherfucker Mister We know a thing or two about you, mister You said I had a feel, a flavour An immature misbehaviour that blew your fuse more like a fate than a thing you might choose. And it tripped your switch. And right there's the glitch. I mean, are you confused wanting me for the color of my skin? I ain't a feel. I ain't a flavor. I ain't a taste. I ain't a dose of your sin. Look at this face. Because it ain't letting you in, motherfucker. That's all I got for you tonight. Thank you.